Hi, my name's Roy. I work for b and uh, I'm a product sustainability manager there. Uh, B&Q is part of the, the Kingfisher group. Kingfisher is the uh, biggest DIY uh, do-it-yourself uh, retailer in Europe. Uh, B&Q is, is, is part of that business. We operate in, in the UK and, and Ireland. Uh, we sell about in excess of 40,000 different product lines. Uh, we have about 3 million customers a week. So, so what is it like when you go into a B&Q store? We, we have a, a wide range of products. They divide into four basic categories. One is building materials like bricks and cement. The other one is uh, decorate, decorating products like uh, paint and wallpaper. We have other products which are, are seasonal products, so garden furniture, Christmas decorations, things like that, stuff that depends on the time of the year. Uh, and, the f and the final one is, sh is showroom products, which are you know, new kitchens. So we, we do have a kitchens installation service, for example. As part of our larger, wider sustainability strategy, we have a number of strands throughout the business, um, a number of work streams. Um, one of them is, is healthy homes, and that's where the, the, the chemicals policy fits in. One of the big things for B&Q is, uh, is that all of our products en end up in people's homes. And it's increasingly important for products that go into people's homes to um, be free of problematic chemicals. Uh, the reason is, is that for uh, reasons of, of climate change, for reasons of energy uh, prices and uncertainty, that a lot of people are insulating, draft proofing and generally sealing their homes. Uh, so it's even more important that what you put in your home won't adversely affect your health. Uh, so it's an integral part of that, uh, providing our customers with a healthy home. BNQ started uh, worrying about chemicals about uh, 10 years ago, something like that, when we put together a list of things that uh, products that uh, chemicals that we didn't like to see in the products that, that we sold. And it's evolved over time because of changes in, in legislation, for example, the advent of, of REACH and changes in biocides and, and uh, plant protection products regulations. We, uh, we've adopted a number of approaches o over that time. Um, f uh, the first approach was to have a big list of chemicals and say to our suppliers, don't use that, these. But um, that didn't really work, uh, at least not to our degree of, uh, uh, weren't overly, we're completely satisfied with the end results, shall we put it that way. Um, the reason is, is that a lot, of, a lot of our suppliers are not suppliers of chemical products, they're suppliers of, of articles, of, of you know, everything from sort of cr Christmas trees to sort of uh, kitchens to sort of bricks. Uh, and a lot of those companies don't really realise that they're um, handling products that are, have origins in the chemical industry. So for them, uh, when you present them with a list of chemicals, they, they think it doesn't apply to them. Uh, so part of the process that we went through was uh, an educational process, a training process with our suppliers, and also provide, eventually providing them tools for, for them in order to um, isolate from a, quite a, a long list of chemicals down to a, a short list of chemicals, which they could then, then go and find out whether they were in the products that they, they were supplying us. The big lesson of having a chemicals policy is it's not enough just to have a list. Um, there's very few, uh, very few examples of when... Uh, suppliers have come to us and said, we've got this in our, in our products. We've always had to go to them and ask them to, uh, as to whether it's there. So it's providing the tools uh, for your suppliers to work with, um, reminding them on a frequent basis of what they've got to do. So at every point when you're doing supplier assessments, when you're doing... Um, when you're having product introductions, to re-ask those questions every time and say, you know, are these chemicals in, in these products? Because otherwise they'll forget. Yeah, the SIN list is a very good tool for uh, horizon scanning. Um, it's, it takes me and b q up a couple of levels in the Donald Rumsfeld ladder of uncertainty, if I can put it that way, in the sense that you start at the bottom with a load of unknown unknowns, and without the, without the sin list, uh, I think we'll probably be in that situation. Whereas with the, with the sin list, at least you eliminate one of, at least one of the unknowns, which is what chemicals we should be worried about, and also helps with the, the second unknown, which is, well, where should we be looking for them then? Um, We've got further work to do on top of that, which is then, are they actually in the products that we buy? Uh, but at least we know where to start, what chemicals we're looking for, and where and in, in what region, and what sort of product type that we should be looking for. 
I find the Chemtech Business Group a, a valuable resource for me, um, not only for you know for B and Q, uh, but also for me personally. In that it's a it's a great support network, uh, meeting other people involved in we're com uh, with uh, similar issues in in other companies, uh, to be able to uh, draw on the information um, uh, provided by the Sinlist and 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 Chemsec. So those those are those are the main uh, benefits I, g I get from it. What can other actors help us with? Um, first of all, it would be really good if our supply chain will be, would be feeding us this information about chemicals in the products that uh, they sell to us instead of us having to go and find out. So any support from the chemical industry, from, from NGOs uh, and from government that uh, would aid that process would be, greatly, uh, would be greatly appreciated. The second thing which would be of real value is increased quantity and accuracy of information as to where these chemicals occur uh, because of the way that we're having to go and chase these at the moment um, it's important for us to know where they may occur so we can go and ask the question.